it's an overwhelming feeling to, to win this award and a, I guess a great surprise, but, uh, partly because I actually got a feeling that the jury didn't necessarily love the project, but obviously they did. The project is the National Maritime Museum of China. It's to be in Tianjin, just uh, east of Beijing. Tianjin has a, an enormous maritime history, but the reason for the museum really is that there's a feeling that the world isn't much understanding of China's maritime past and its marine culture as well. But China has been built on water really. Not only has it been very much related to the sea, but it was built on canals and, and that's how it evolved, all of which is, is kind of maritime based. So they really wanted the world to understand and also their own people to understand more about how the, the country evolved from a, from a water perspective as against what people think, I think, mostly is a land based perspective. We arrived at the form of the building really with, with a bit of a dream. One aspect of that is we did want to segment it almost immediately at the beginning to stop it from becoming one very large object. It's 80,000 square metres. The brief consisted of a series of different themes, nature and oceans, world maritime civilization, Chinese marine culture and so on. So we did feel there was a kind of a good thing about giving each of those an identity and then kind of relating them together. So the fan form that you see in the plan was in part about giving them a distinction and then converging as a fan does to show how all, all of those themes might relate to each other. But as time went on it also reinforced itself with, with other aspects. One was, uh, I think as Charles Jenks talked about in a, in a talk yesterday, about um, metaphor and interpretation and certainly we weren't trying to give one and, uh, and do anything overt, but we did start to form ideas about the form of the building that just might make people kind of imagine things that perhaps we hadn't even thought of, but some of those things were related to ships in port or wharfs in port. There are multiple interpretations and we just thought if we can really create a kind of evocative museum from the outside, people might come to visit it and might appreciate that it really does feel like a, a maritime museum, even if they hadn't really preconceived anything. An interesting aspect of the process is museums at that scale need about a million artefacts to occupy them. So the government have been very rapidly trying to collect elements and a Chinese junk and, and so on to work in it. So our process of design has had to adapt post-competition to some of the things that are, that are going to be produced there, lower spaces, taller spaces for much larger things and so on. So it has been a sort of evolving process. We're currently in the middle of what we would call design development, which is a, a stage later than the schematic design and getting into semi-working drawings for the actual construction. The reason for that is that uh, during that process the government announced that no matter what they wanted the project completed by the end of 2015 which in our terms is a kind of record time to do a project. So back at competition stage um, we did start to think uh, about the structure and construction processes and um, they also related very much to the, to the shapes that we, we, we've been creating. On top of all that they're about to start putting the, the piling in at the end of this month so it's, it's a very immediate kind of start, but we've designed it in such a way that the, the piling and the main floor can be put in um, and we've still got plenty of flexibility to develop the curatorial brief as we go along. Um, and so we've kind of tried to dovetail that, that, that rapidity with the kind of the quality that we want to get out of the project.